Hi everyone, today is going to be amazing because it's all about the anti-inflammatory diet that I have been raving about on my Instagram. Today's about the anti-inflammatory diet. It's gonna be a good day, good day, great day with Micah Meyer. Have you ever tried a diet that just didn't work, didn't really do anything and was a pain? Well, I've tried those too. But then Dr. Shane, right here with me, Harvard trained pain and wellness doctor gave me some of the best advice in my life. It was, why don't you try an anti-inflammatory diet? So I brought him here today to give us the ins and outs, the do's and don'ts, so that you can learn about the diet that has worked wonders for me so far, um, so that you can kind of have the same results that I'm experiencing. At the end of this video, we're actually going to give you a shopping list of what you should buy, what you should leave at the grocery store, so that you have success with this really overall lifestyle change too. So on that note, let's get started. All right, so I'm so excited about today because we get to talk to Dr. Shane, the Dr. Shane, about the diet that I have been ranting and raving about on Instagram. So thank you, Dr. Shane, for being here My today. Pleasure. Shane is the go-to um, world-renowned doctor for uh, really anything pain management and also just wellness, overall wellness. Uh, now, so when I first heard about the anti-inflammatory diet, I think it was from my doctor originally. Yes. I just felt sluggish. Mm -hmm. I felt like my body needed a reset yes. and my doctor suggested this. And so I remember calling you and saying, what is this anti-inflammatory diet? Because you know me, I'm not a diet person. Yes. I can't be hungry, I can't function. <laughs> so I, I remember <laughs> saying, what is this and why is it, is it, what do you think about it? For everyone out there that doesn't know what an anti-inflammatory diet is, what is it? I don't like calling it a diet, right? It feels yeah, weird. I, I agree. I kind of don't like the idea of a diet, right? Yeah. So a diet sounds very restrictive. It sounds yeah. like you're changing your quality of life in a bad way. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think of it as a diet as much as a, a lifestyle change, right? Yeah. A lifestyle change with lots of options and not really a lot of restrictions is what's something I love about the anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. diet, if we're going to call it that. When I discussed that with you, the interesting thing is I was like, on my own journey to try to figure out what works and what doesn't. When it comes down to it, an anti-inflammatory diet really looks at using whole unprocessed food with high nutrient density to help improve our quality of life. And that may mean pain, uh, reduction in weight, maybe reduction mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. risk for disease, and just overall making us feel better, have a quality of life that's meaningful. And that's really when it comes down to it, what the, the anti-inflammatory diet is. Um, I hope you don't mind. I took some. No I literally made lots of <laughs> questions that I personally had that I know, and I still kind of have some of these questions yes. um, that I haven't asked you that I know they're going to also have. If they're watching someone out there, yep. who should consider this diet? Yep. So the good news is that this diet is mainly for almost anyone. The one caveat I would say is someone that's on a chronic blood thinner, there's certain types, uh, they have to be careful with the certain types of vegetables they have. Other than that, that's a very small population. If you're on a blood thinner, I talk to your doctor before starting a diet. But other than that, I think this diet is really phenomenal for basically everybody. And I would definitely suggest if you haven't tried this diet before, I would try it for 30 days and just see how you feel. That's what got me hooked and I've stuck with it for two yeah. years now. So. Wow. It's yeah. really for anyone. Let's talk about the benefits of an anti-inflammatory yeah. diet. So when I think about an anti-inflammatory diet, I'm really looking at the whole lifestyle, okay? So mm -hmm. when you use an anti-inflammatory diet, you get adequate sleep and regular exercise. The benefits are incredible. It reduces your risk of diabetes, heart disease, obesity, some types of cancers, and also depression. It improves your mood and increases your energy. Also, when you're on an anti-inflammatory diet, people who are on this for long periods of time, we tend to see improvement in their labs. So there's these things called wow. inflammatory markers, and we actually see chronic inflammation going down based on their labs. Wow. The other things we wow. see are improved blood sugar over time, improvement in their triglycerides, improvement of their good uh, cholesterols and reduction in the bad cholesterols. And also, people just tend to lose weight. They have more lean mass. In other words, they look toner and they look leaner. Part of this is by putting those nutrient-dense parts of the food back in, the whole foods that we eat, such as in produce, 
We feel full longer, we feel better. The change in the contents of what we're eating make us feel more satisfied. We're no longer feeling like we need another serving of whatever the processed right. food we're having. So there's so many benefits for this that I don't know why you wouldn't try yeah. it for at least 30 days. I want all of that. All right, exactly. <laughs> you know, the crazy thing is, is I did my own experiment and I tried this about two years ago. My favorite part is increased mood, or better mood and increased mm -hmm. energy. To me, yes. that is the best part of yes, the diet. Yes, that's what I was saying. I was saying to Marco, Marco's my husband. I was saying to him, it was week three. The first two weeks I was like, ah, oh, you know, it's, it seems like I'm not really feeling anything. He was like, patience, patience. Yes. And then week three, I remember I didn't have coffee in the morning and I'm a big, I'm a coffee girl. I woke up and I haven't, I hadn't been drinking coffee yes. on this diet and I just had like a boost of energy. And it was the first, it was like my body needed to recalculate yes. and then it sort of just hit. And then I had, it, like an immeasurable energy. And I was like, wow, this yep. is amazing. Yep. Yeah. So that, that's the exciting part. And to your point, it does take some time to get yeah. used to some modifications in your lifestyle. But usually after you get through a couple of weeks, that's when you tend to start seeing the true benefits of something like an anti-inflammatory diet and lifestyle. With the anti-inflammatory diet, the one thing that I think everyone asks is, can you have carbs? Yep. And, and if so, what kind of carbs? Yeah. So this is the exciting part is you don't have to take out the carbohydrates. You can have, right? So carbohydrates are really important to a balanced diet, right? And so a lot of these fad diets are coming in and out, um, take away all your carbohydrates and then you feel terrible throughout yeah. the day and at night. And um, there's a lot of bad things that happen when you're not having any carbohydrates, but really you can have carbohydrates on this, on this diet. Now, there's specific types of carbohydrates, which also benefit you in many different ways because of the micronutrients involved with them. But what I would say when you're thinking about carbohydrates, you want to stay away from processed foods and you want to substitute that with some of my favorites in terms of the nutrient content, mm -hmm. quinoa, um, wild rice, brown rice, um, barley, oats are all totally fine in this diet. Now, if you're thinking about weight loss on top of that, I would say, you know, portion control is important. So when you're coming up with, when it's specifically about carbohydrates, you want to make sure a palm is a palm amount is probably a reasonable amount to think about when you're thinking about carbohydrates, but you do not have to take carbohydrates out in this diet. So As a matter nice. of fact, I would recommend you continue on carbohydrates. They give it's you really, energy. They give you They're, energy. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And so, so barley, interestingly, Barley is not gluten-free. So this is not a gluten-free diet. That's right. So this is not about gluten-free or um, this is not a gluten-free diet. Yeah. Okay. So some people find, and it's actually a very small sub-segment of people that actually have a true gluten allergy. Um, so keep that in mind. Some people say they feel better on gluten-free diets, but gluten-free diets are pretty restrictive. Yeah. And that can be t challenging both in shopping and cooking, but also socially. So People that have true gluten-free diets absolutely should restrict having uh, gluten contents in their foods. But if you don't know, sometimes what, what you can do is take out glutens for two weeks and see how you do. But in this diet in and of itself, you yeah. do not have to restrict yourself uh, okay. with a gluten-free diet. Okay, so the do's and don'ts, general do's and don'ts. Now at yeah. the end, we're going to include a full list and, and at the end of this video of the do's and don'ts for your shopping so you know exactly what to buy at the grocery store and what to avoid. But just top line yeah. on the anti-inflammatory diet, what are the don'ts? Let's start with don'ts, right? Yeah. So what can we or should we not right. eat? So the general rules when you want the, for the don'ts of an anti-inflammatory diet, one would be anything with added sugar, so sugary beverages, sugary uh, foods, and that also includes those packaged desserts. So cookies, cakes, mm -hmm. candy, anything with sugar or processed you want to stay away from. Processed foods, those tend to be the ones in the aisles, the grocery aisles in the center. You also want to stay away from processed meats. So those are like the deli meats that are packaged. You want to stay away from um, sausage. You want to stay away from red meat as much as possible. Um, you also want to stay away from certain types of oils. So particularly vegetable oils, such as soybean oil or corn oil, and partially hydrogenated oils. And it actually shows that right on the nutrient labels. Um, you want to stay away from trans fats that tend to be in fried and fast food. And then in general, you don't, you want to try to avoid alcohol for the most part. 
So for carbohydrates, you want to stay away from refined carbohydrates. So things like white bread, white rice, uh, refined pastas, and you really want to stick with the whole carbohydrates. So we have our no-no list. What about what should we eat? Yeah. So the general list for things you should eat. So vegetables, just stack them on, especially organic vegetables tend to be better. Fruits, you want to stick with the dark uh, berries if possible, but fruits in general are great as long as there's no added sugar. As far as fats, you want to stick with a couple of general ones. So one of them being avocados or avocado oil. Olive oil, especially um, mm. virgin, extra virgin olive oil tends to be less processed. And any nut oil, so nut oils such as walnut oil, uh, almond oil, there's a lot of different types, and flaxseed oil. So any of those oils are fantastic and I would encourage them. You mentioned in the nose, no red meat. Yes. So in terms of protein, like what proteins should we, I've been eating a lot of tofu. Yes. Um, recently the tofu from Trader Joe's is just bananas good and they marinate it in all these different flavors. And, yes. But what else protein wise should people eat? If we are not doing packaged, you know, lunch meats, we're not doing red meats. What is a good protein? Yes. Yeah, so there's actually lots of options for proteins. The best in terms of anti-inflammatory qualities are fatty fish. So thinking more like salmon, mackerel, anchovies, those type of fatty fish tend to have lots of anti-inflammation. If you're staying away from fish, you mentioned tofu is fantastic. Also beans and legumes uh, and lentils have amazing, uh, not only anti-inflammatory qualities, but also have a lot of fiber and protein in them. You could also do lean meat. So lean meats are okay. So poultry, for example, is just fine. So good old grilled chicken. That's right. Fine. Yeah. That's fine. So okay. you have a lot of options when it comes to- But not fried. But not fried. That's right. You can use those oils that we talked about, whether it be avocado oil, even coconut oil. Um, I would actually encourage that for cooking. Okay. But you want to stay away again from those vegetable oils and partially hydrogenated oils. I have been doing a breakfast uh, maybe it's an omelet, a vegetable omelet or something like that. And then for lunch, I'll have a rice bowl mm -hmm. or um, a brown rice bowl with salmon and vegetables yes. or something like that. Um, and then for dinner, I'll usually just do, you know, a salad with a protein or vegetables and a protein. Or I found this um, chickpea pasta, yes. which was a toy. It was so good. It was from Whole Foods, actually chickpea pasta and it tasted really like pasta. So a small portion of that for dinner. Is it true that eating too late is not good for you? Well, I think when you're talking about if it's good or bad for you, one is I would rather you stick with a really healthy diet than um, if you're hungry going to bed. So that's one yeah. thing. I think it's all about what you're going to be compliant with, what you're going to stick to, right? So right. if it turns out that you're really hungry at night, well then eat. That's probably your body telling you that you need food. <laughs> Um, but with that being said, I would say probably after 7 or 8 p.m., pending you don't have a night job or something along those lines, um, I would say 7 or 8 o'clock, you want to probably start sort of uh, tapering off of eating. Yeah. And part of that is because digestion is a very high energy process for your body and you mm -hmm. want some time for the digestion to take place right. uh, so it doesn't affect your sleep. So I would say if you can cut it off at 7 or 8 o'clock, um, I think that would be ideal. For me, what I did is I was doing, I do three meals a day and kind of a snack sometime in the afternoon. For me, I found the best success is I, I really stop eating a few hours before I go to bed. So if I am going to bed at 10 o'clock, my dinner's at 5.30. I know it sounds early, but this is, and then I just have ginger tea or something like that before I go to bed. If you're having your carbs, can you have carbs at night for dinner or should you just eat them the first half of the day like I've been doing or can I I mean what what's the deal with carbs really what you want to look at is carbohydrates over the course of 24 hours so whether you eat them in the morning or nighttime overall you want to just look at the content that you're having in a full day oh. I would more think about the amount especially if you're looking into weight loss but I really wouldn't restrict yourself uh, with timing because again the more restrictive you are, the less chances you're going to stick to a diet like this. In in the moment, what do you do for cravings? I crave salty and sweet things. Some people are salty. Some people are sweet. I crave both. Yes. So <laughs> what would you recommend if you're just, you know, day four, it's not, it's, it's, you're finding it a little hard to put the Doritos away. What do you do? 
So it depends on your craving. So if you're craving, one thing to know when you're craving a lot of salty or sweet, one, you may be overtired, so make sure you're getting enough rest. The other thing is if you're dehydrated, try drinking one or two glasses of water. Oftentimes that will curb the, car the craving that you're mm -hmm. having. Oftentimes it may be that you're dehydrated, that you're having cravings for salt or sugar. So try that first. If that doesn't work, there's lots of great alternatives. And that's the great thing about a diet like this. So for one, if you're having, if you're craving sweets, fruits are okay. The ones that have the most anti-inflammatory properties are the dark berries. So blueberries, strawberries, blackberries, cherries are fantastic anti-inflammatory uh, and high nutrient density. So those type of fruits, you can use those throughout the day for your sweet cravings. For a salty, if you have a salty craving, and you try those other things we talked about. The other thing I would try is take some vegetables and dip it in something like avocado. So avocados, or if you like guacamole, those fantastic mm. anti-inflammatory properties, and you get the good fats out of it. That's a way that you can get your salt craving in too. Amazing, and nuts too, right? Like yes. nuts. So that's a, I'm glad you that brought that up. That has been my go-to snack. Yes, so nuts right. are actually encouraged on a diet like this. So. Nuts have a good type of fat and lots of micronutrients in them. So walnuts, almonds, macadamia nuts, I think it's best to mix them because they have different micronutrients. Mm -hmm. And also the nut oils. So if you need to use oils in your cooking, most of the uh, nut-based oils are totally fine and actually very healthy for you. Uh -huh. What about alcohol? Yeah. Alcohol and coffee. Yeah. So alcohol comes up all the time. Now, most alcohol does have an inflammatory response. So it's important to know that. Now, with that said, everything in moderation. I would say if you can just stick away from alcohol, alcohol tends to have sugar and it can promote inflammation. But what I would say is if you want a glass of alcohol, I think a glass of red wine is it does have some anti-inflammatory properties, but it's all about moderation. The recommendation is to get the benefit from the anti-inflammatory effects no more than five ounces, uh, five floral ounces for women, 10 floral ounces for men. So if you're going to have alcohol, keep it in moderation. But in general, you should probably stick away from al alcohol when you can. Okay, and what about coffee? Coffee is fantastic. Now when I say coffee, it's really important to know what type of coffee. So you want a black coffee, okay? So black coffee actually has lots of antioxidants in it. So black coffee is actually fantastic where people run into problems is all the things that they put in their coffee. So the mm. creamers with sugar, high fructose uh, syrup, um, all the sweeteners in a lot of the coffee uh, shops that you go to. So you have to be really careful about what you're putting in your coffee. Replace that with an almond milk would be perfect. And then use natural um, anti-inflammatory spices. So cinnamon is an anti-inflammatory. Mm. Turmeric is an anti-inflammatory. Um, you can use nutmeg. So use natural um, spices to flavor your coffee and then almond milk is fine. And um, oh, and then you can have a delicious coffee without the sugar and without the inflammation that causes right. it. So basically you wanna stay away from dairy and sugar. That's right. And then the bad carbohydrates. That's right. Yeah, I think overall I was doing pretty good. I didn't know that about coffee for some reason. It just shows you have to be careful what you Google and it has <laughs> Right? There's so much information yes. online. I thought I couldn't have coffee, but I just learned that I can. Yes. I've been using almond milk. I, I was previously using almond milk, but then I thought that coffee was not allowed. So I, I'm thrilled. <laughs> I'm thrilled I'm now. I'm glad I could um, sort that out. <laughs> but okay, anything else you want to add in? Well, I would add in a couple things. And one being when we talk about anti-inflammatory diet, again, it's a lifestyle. So mm -hmm. What also causes increased inflammation is reduction in sleep. So you want to make sure that you're getting adequate sleep mm -hmm. and exercise daily about 30 minutes a day can help improve all those qualities that we talked about and help reduce inflammation. So when we think about other things that can help reduce chronic inflammation, you want to add those or supplement in the diet. And then the other thing I would mention is people often, often ask me about supplements. Now that's probably the least in terms of priorities, but when you're adding supplements, other things that can cause anti-inflammation include fish oil and also uh, curcumin are two supplements that I usually recommend. Okay. So some other things that we can think about in adding our diet, but I would say those are less priority, really prioritizing your diet and the other things that we talked about. Okay. So I think of this as an umbrella. You know, when you think about an anti-inflammatory diet, it's really about using eating unprocessed, healthy nutrient foods 
And when you think about the different types of diets that have these uh, criteria, there's so many of them. Now, some of them come and go. One of the ones that stuck around, I also often recommend if you're not sure what to eat, the Mediterranean diet is in the umbrella of an anti-inflammatory diet. There's also something called a DASH diet, and there's many others. So I think there's gonna be some trends that come and go, but when we talk about what's in an anti-inflammatory diet, I think that's here to stay. The name may change, but in that diet, what's in it, it's not gonna change. If okay. you're on this diet, you're bound to see amazing results over time. Okay, so if people want more advice from you, you're always so good on Instagram about answering everybody's questions. Where can they find you? If someone wants to come see you, where can we go? I love answering questions, so ask away. You can find me both on Instagram and TikTok. Um, if you have questions and you want me to answer them, I'm excited to answer any questions that you have, so link up with me there. Great. And for everybody else out there who is not sure if they want to try this, you can do it with me. I just started, um, you know, a little over a month ago. So jump on the bandwagon. And so I'm not alone. <laughs> I have people have talked to you about this. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Shane. So for everybody out there, thank you so much for sharing this. Anybody who might find it interesting, don't forget to like, subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out Dr. Shane.